We're going back to the deep. Oh, not again. Let's hope we've learned a lesson or two from our previous voyages, because as we so painstakingly learned, there are some terrifying things swimming down there in the deep blue sea. As we touched on in part one of this video, there is a good reason why the ocean and the many things that lurk within it are terrifying to us human beings. We can't breathe down there, so much so that we've had a better success rate at surveying the moon rather than the secrets that linger at the bottom of the ocean bed. And maybe that's for the best. After all, what would you prefer, an aquatic leviathan on the moon or on our own planet? Yeah, it goes without saying, doesn't it? Let's take a look. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scary channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today, we curiously take a look at the top five scariest horror movies from the deep. Part two, roll the clip. Uh, yeah, there's something in the airlock. Sorry about that. But for the curious amongst you, that clip was from 1989's Deep Star 6. And for the astute aquatic horror fans amongst you, of course you'll know that 1989 was a pretty big year for horror movies from the deep. And although Deep Star 6 is an incredibly fun movie, it also missed its mark by quite a few fathoms. And as far as horror movies go, this one is just a series of admittedly awesome set pieces. So yeah, honourable mention, but on with the show. Kicking off at number 5, Deep Rising, 1998. Okay. You got me guys, because whilst Deep Star 6 is a movie that was pretty awesome for the most part, quite unlike its counterparts, Sphere, Virus and several others, 1998's Deep Rising took all of those same components that we enjoyed, and yet this time it actually made a movie out of them. Which is an important thing, because although we're pretty lenient as horror fans, these films have to make some kind of sense, right? Or at least be plausible. And as far as Deep Rising goes, this film did indeed make at least some kind of sense in an A to B to see kind of manner. No spoilers though, but whatever you thought about the ending to this movie, uh, what the hell, it doesn't make any sense, but I still loved it. Now, ever since James Cameron's The Abyss, a lot of these movies got paired off as cheap imitations, as the stereotypical alien clone underwater. But on second look, Deep Rising actually has a lot to offer us. Written and directed by Steven Sommers, the man responsible for 1999's The Mummy and 2004's Van Helsing, his particular track record as a filmmaker may give you a little inkling as to what you'll be getting yourself in for with Deep Rising. And that's because whilst Deep Rising is very much of the horror essence, more so than any other film on this list, this one is an action film. Big set pieces, explosions, we're talking jet skis, cruise liners getting attacked by giant tentacle monsters, and who better to lead such a harebrained charge than the man himself, Treat Williams. I mean, my favourite Treat film is Once Upon a Time in America, which is awesome, but let's face it, Treat doesn't ever shy away from the more kitschy roles in cinema, particularly when he takes the lead. Which is absolutely fine, because he's awesome in this movie, and he plays his part precisely as it was meant to be written. Listen, if you go into this film with the intention of having fun, you most certainly will have it. It's a B-movie with some A-list sensibilities, and most importantly, deep sea giant tentacle monsters. We're golden. Swinging in at number four, The Shallows, 2016. This film got a lot of stick after its release back in 2016, and I'm not entirely sure why. And also, it's important to note that whilst we left off Steven Spielberg's Jaws from this list, down to the fact that it's one of the most famous movies ever made, The Shallows is grown from the same set of DNA. This is a shark movie, and when we talk about the primary function of aquatic-based horror, this is the most visceral representation of it. There are no elaborate parasitic alien monstrosities, there are no haunted submarines, there's just a girl, a surfboard, and a really, really really angry shark, but this movie's charm is in its simplicity, and it's also slightly too cheesy to even realise it's made of cheese, but hey, so too was Jaws in many ways. Listen, I'm not trying to compare the two, but the point is, if you want to be scared of the ocean, watch this movie. Written by Anthony Jawinski and directed by Yame Kalet Sara, The Shallows tells the tale of a medical student named Nancy, played by the awesome Blake Lively, who after following the death of her mother, travels to the same secluded California beach that her mother used to visit as she attempts to grieve following her passing. After spending a day surfing there, she's inexplicably attacked and wounded by a great white shark, and then we're off, captured in Nancy's visceral survival as she attempts to cling on to life whilst barely being 200 yards away from the shore. I won't say any more because really that is all there is to it, but this film is reliant on a remarkable performance 
from Blake Lively, who really takes this movie to the next level, and the vast majority of its success is down to her captivating likability. You see, it kind of goes without saying, but for a film with essentially one character and a shark, it's important that we feel connected to the sole survivor in question. And we do. If you're scared of the ocean, watch this movie and you'll probably be vindicated with that fear. <laughs> next up at number three, Dead Calm, 1989. Alright, now whilst technically this film may be the least deep, I guess, considering it's more of a sailing based horror than anything else, as far as psychological trauma goes, 1989's Dead Calm is certainly worth its salt in seawater. And again, much like The Shallows and another film that will appear on this list, which is yet to be mentioned, it's in the simplicity of this movie that allows the weight of its horror thriller to truly shine. Well, actually I suppose sink would be the more accurate metaphor, but whatever. Directed by Philip Noyce and written by Terry Hayes, Dead Calm is based upon the 1963 novel of the same name by Charles Wood. Williams, which, as a side note that's also pretty awesome, was picked up by the legendary Awesome Wells in the late 60s, produced as a film known as The Deep, but was played by financial troubles and was never actually fully released. So yeah, the fact of the day, but although we never got that, we did get this. Dead Calm tells a tale of Ray Ingram, played by Nicole Kidman, who absolutely steals the show in this movie, alongside her husband John, played by the equally fantastic Sam Neill, who following the tragic death of their young son in a car accident, decide to sail the Pacific Ocean in an attempt to deal with their grief. Now as the pair near the middle of the Pacific, they stumble upon a lone boat, quickly taken on water, and a distraught man, Huey, played by Billy Zane, who is also phenomenal in this movie, and claims that all of his sailing companions have died from food poisoning and his boat is sinking. Hmm. Yeah, if that sounds like a fishy proposition, it certainly is, but I'll say no more because although simple, the impact of this film is down to the many twists and turns that its narrative takes. This film is genuinely nerve wracking and instead of making us afraid of the terrors that lurk in the deep, instead it's the people on the surface that we're scared of. Great film, give this one a watch. Coming in at number two, Leviathan, 1989. Okay, okay, listen, because although flip reversing the tables and sticking horror in a sailing boat is fun enough, let's not beat about the bush. When we think of horror from the deep, we're talking terrifying, parasitic, aquatic life forms, right? Yeah, and if you want that, then Leviathan is precisely that movie. And also, whilst this film got torn to shreds critically, don't listen too closely to the naysayers, because although it's certainly not the smartest movie ever made, it also certainly knows exactly what it is, and that's important for a movie, particularly for such a niche subgenre as this, for us to fully enjoy it. Sometimes we don't want cerebral horror that plays with our minds. We want to look fear fully in the face and then shoot a harpoon at it. Right? Directed by George Cosmosos, the real clout of this movie comes from the understanding of its screenwriters, as demonstrated by David Peoples and Jeb Stewart, who were the writers behind Blade Runner and Die Hard respectively, which may give you an idea as to where the sales of this movie are pointed. Leviathan tells the tale of Stephen Beck, played by Peter Weller, a geologist who is hired by an undersea mining corporation and tasked to assemble a crew for a six month operation at the bottom of the ocean bed. Whilst working on the project, Beck's crew discover that unbeknownst to them, there's a Soviet shipwreck known as Leviathan lurking nearby, and in classic subaquatic horror fashion, of course, Leviathan harbors some dark, mutagenic secrets, and thus we have all the ingredients for the ensuing horror show. There's not much more to it really, and whilst 1989's Leviathan evokes imagery of the Thing, Alien, and the Abyss on the surface, deep down, all that matters is that for the next 100 or so minutes, set piece after set piece of increasingly awesome and terrifying sequences assault our eyeballs. In many ways, Leviathan is the literal definition of what we love about unrelenting rip off 80s horror. It plays like a magazine of many movies, just this time they're stuck underwater and as we all know, at the bottom of the ocean bed, no one can hear you breathe, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and finally coming in at the number one spot, Open Water, 2003. And whilst all of our entries on this list definitely aren't perfect in any sense, this one included, we have to remember exactly the point behind this list. The horror in question is that of the ocean and the creatures that linger within it. This film is the definition of that. And also, as a side note, we have to commend the actual craft of 2003's Open Water because for a film of such simplicity and minimal filmmaking, as well as the tiny budget behind this movie, the fact that Open Water was made is noteworthy in its own right. Written and directed by Chris Kenton, 
latest open water tales of tale of Daniel Kinter and Susan Watkins, a run of the mill couple who are in the midst of trying to patch up their rocky relationship, and so in doing that decide to go on a scuba diving vacation. Now it's important to know that this movie is loosely based upon the terrifying real life tragedy of Tom and Eileen Longeren who disappeared in 1998 whilst on a scuba diving tour. Whilst the tragic basis of this movie certainly is grounded in reality, open water pulls no punches in depicting the very visceral tale of survival outlined here. Whilst beneath the water the couple briefly separate from the diving group and in that terrifyingly small window the boat leaves, leaving Daniel and Susan behind stranded with the diving crew completely unaware. I mean that's enough to strike fear into the hearts of many of us right? But that's only the start because this film really is unrelenting. This film is physical and that's exactly the point of it. Listen I understand the criticism behind this film particularly with the fact that it's shot entirely on digital video but that's exactly the point. Open water is bare bones so that it can highlight the fact that a couple are stranded in the middle of the ocean and we never once leave their side terrifyingly witnessing their slow and tragic demise. This is man versus nature stuff and there are no heroes. Only sharks. Well, there we have our fans. Our list for the top five scariest horror movies from the deep, part two. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts as well as any choice picks down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Balls says Trailer Park Boys is truly overrated. <sighs> Dude, that one hurts. It's okay. It just means that there's more liquor for me and everyone else who realises that it's not overrated at all. It's one of the finest comedies ever made, so shut up. And finally, Corona Simmons says, Okay, is it just me, but if you met Michael Pitt in person, you would literally keep questioning, is he going to try and kill me? After Funny Games, I would always side-eye Michael. I mean, I suppose, Corona, but that's just a testament of a fantastic actor, right? Hey, after Pitt played Jimmy Darmody in Boardwalk Empire, that guy earned my eternal respect. That guy is one of the greatest characters ever written. It was like looking at a Graham Greene novel in a single character. <sighs> I'm still mad at the end of season one. Anyway, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.